Sir Philip Anthony Hopkins, CBE, born 31 December 1937, is a Welsh actor of film, stage, and television, and a composer and painter. After graduating from the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama in 1957, he trained at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, and was then spotted by Laurence Olivier who invited him to join the Royal National Theatre. In 1968, he got his break in film in The Lion in Winter, playing Richard I. Considered to be one of the greatest living actors, Hopkins is well known for his portrayal of Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Actor, its sequel Hannibal, and the prequel Red Dragon. Other notable films include The Mask of Zorro, The Bounty, Meet Joe Black, The Elephant Man, Magic, 84 Charing Cross Road, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Legends of the Fall, Thor, The Remains of the Day, Amistad, Nixon, The World's Fastest Indian, Instinct, and Fracture. Along with his Academy Award, Hopkins has won three BAFTA Awards, two Emmys, and the Cecil B. DeMille Award. In 1993, he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II for services to the arts. He received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2003, and was made a fellow of the British Academy of Film and Television Arts in 2008. Early life. I don't know where everyone gets the idea we were good friends. I suppose it's because we are both Welsh and grew up near the same town Talbot. For the record, I didn't really know him at all. Hopkins on Welsh compatriot Richard Burton, The Guardian Interview, 2012. Hopkins was born on New Year's Eve 1930 in Marjum, a suburb of Port Talbot, Glamorgan. His parents are Annie Muriel, Nay Yates, and Richard Arthur Hopkins, a baker. His school days were unproductive, he found that he would rather immerse himself in art, such as painting and drawing, or playing the piano, than attend to his studies. In 1949, to instill discipline, his parents insisted he attend Jones West Monmouth Boys School in Pontypool. He remained there for five terms and was then educated at Cowbridge Grammar School in the Vale of Glamorgan. Hopkins was influenced and encouraged by Welsh compatriot Richard Burton, whom he met at the age of 15. Hopkins promptly enrolled at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama in Cardiff, from which he graduated in 1957. After two years in the British Army doing his national service, he moved to London, where he trained at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Career. Hopkins made his first professional stage appearance in the Palace Theatre, Swansea, in 1960 with Swansea Little Theatre's production of Have a Cigarette. In 1965, after several years in repertory, he was spotted by Laurence Olivier, who invited him to joined the Royal National Theatre in London. Hopkins became Olivier's understudy, and filled in when Olivier was struck with appendicitis during a production of August Strindberg's The Dance of Death. Olivier later noted in his memoir, Confessions of an Actor, that a new young actor in the company of exceptional promise named Anthony Hopkins was understudying me and walked away with the part of Edgar like a cat with a mouse between its teeth. Despite his success at the National, Hopkins tired of repeating the same roles nightly and yearned to be in films. He made his small screen debut in a 19 1967 BBC broadcast of A Flea in Her Ear. His first starring role in a film came in 1964 in Changes, a short directed by Drew Henley, written and produced by James Scott and co-starring Jacqueline Pierce. In 1968, he got his break in The Lion in Winter playing Richard I. Although Hopkins continued in theater, most notably at the National Theater as Lambert LaRue in Pravda by David Hare and Howard Brenton and as Antony and Antony and Cleopatra opposite Judy Dench as well as in the Broadway production of Peter Schaffer's Equus, he gradually moved away Away from it to become more established as a television and film actor. He portrayed Charles Dickens in the BBC television film The Great Inimitable Mr. Dickens in 1970, and Pierre Bazukov in the BBC's miniseries War and Peace, 1972. In 1972 he starred as World War I British Prime Minister David Lloyd George in Young Winston, and in 1977 he played British Army officer John Frost in Richard Attenborough's World War II film A Bridge Too Far. In 1980, he starred in The Elephant Man as the English doctor Sir Fred Frederick Treves, who attends to Joseph Merrick, portrayed by John Hurt, a severely deformed man in 19th century London. That year he also starred opposite Shirley MacLaine in A Change of Seasons and famously said she was the most obnoxious actress I have ever worked with. In 1984, he starred opposite Mel Gibson in The Bounty as William Bly, captain of the Royal Navy ship the HMS Bounty, in a retelling of The Mutiny on the Bounty. In 1992, Hopkins portrayed Abraham Van Helsing in Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula, set in 19 
1950s post-war Britain, Hopkins starred opposite Emma Thompson in the critically acclaimed The Remains of the Day, 1993. Hopkins was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance, and the film frequently ranks among the best British films of all time. Hopkins portrayed Oxford Academic C.S. Lewis in the 1993 British biographical film Shadowlands, and received the BAFTA Award for Best Actor. During the 1990s, Hopkins had the chance to work with Bart the Bear in two films, Legends of the Fall, 1994, and The Edge, 1997. According to trainer, Lynn Seuss, Tony Hopkins was absolutely brilliant with Bart. He acknowledged and respected him like a fellow actor. He would spend hours just looking at Bart and admiring him. He did so many of his own scenes with Bart. Hopkins was Britain's highest paid performer in 1998, starring in The Mask of Zorro and Meet Joe Black, and also agreed to reprise his role as Dr. Hannibal Lecter for a fee of £15 million. In 2000, Hopkins narrated Drive, Sue's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Hopkins received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2003. Hopkins stated that his role as Burt Monroe, whom he portrayed in his 2005 film The World's Fastest Indian, was his favorite. He also asserted that Monroe was the easiest role that he had played because both men have a similar outlook on life. In 2006, Hopkins was the recipient of the Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award for Lifetime Achievement. In 2008, he received the BAFTA Academy Fellowship Award, the highest award the British Film Academy can bestow. On 24 February 2010, it was announced that Hopkins had been cast in the right, which was released on 28 January 2011. He played a priest who is an expert in exorcisms and whose methods are not necessarily traditional. Hopkins, who is quoted as saying I don't know what I believe, myself personally, reportedly wrote a line some days I don't know if I believe in God or Santa Claus or Tinkerbell, into his character in order to identify with it. On the other hand, in other sources from the same time, he is quoted as saying that he did believe in God and had done so for decades. On 21 September 2011, Peter R. De Vries named Hopkins in the role of the Heineken owner Freddie Heineken in a future film about his kidnapping. Hopkins portrayed Odin, the Alfather or King of Asgard, in the 2011 film adaptation of Marvel Comics Thor. Hopkins portrayed Alfred Hitchcock in Sacha Gervasi's biopic Hitchcock, following his career while making Psycho. The film was released on 23 November 2012. In 2013, he reprised his role as Odin in Thor, The Dark World. In 2014, he portrayed Methuselah in Darren Aronofsky's Noah. Hannah Lecter. Hopkins' most famous role is as the cannibalistic serial killer Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Actor in 1991, with Jodie Foster as Clarice Starling, who also won for Best Actress. The film won Best Picture, Best Director and Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay. Hopkins reprised his role as Lecter twice, in Ridley Scott's Hannibal, 2001, and Red Dragon, 2002. His original portrayal of the character in The Silence of the Lambs has been labeled by the A. AFI is the number one film villain. At the time he was offered the role, Hopkins was making a return to the London stage, performing in M. Butterfly. He had come back to Britain after living for a number of years in Hollywood, having all but given up on a career there, saying, well that part of my life's over, it's a chapter closed. I suppose I'll just have to settle for being a respectable actor poncing around the West End and doing respectable BBC work for the rest of my life. Hopkins played the iconic villain in adaptations of the first three of the Lecter novels by Thomas Harris. The author was reportedly very pleased with Hopkins' portrayal of his antagonist. However, Hopkins stated that Red Dragon would feature his final performance as the character, and that he would not reprise even a narrative role in the latest addition to the series, Hannibal Rising. Acting style. Hopkins is renowned for his preparation for roles. He indicated in interviews that once he has committed to a project, he will go over his lines as many times as is needed, sometimes upwards of 200, until the lines sound natural to him, so that he can do it without thinking. This leads to an almost casual style of delivery that belies the amount of groundwork done beforehand. While it can allow for some careful improvisation, it has also brought him into conflict with the occasional director who departs from the script, or demands what the actor views as an excessive number of takes. Hopkins has stated that after he is finished with a scene, he simply discards the lines, not remembering them later on. This is unlike others who usually remember their lines from a film, even years later. Richard Attenborough, who directed Hopkins on five occasions, found himself going to great lengths during the filming of Shadowlands, 1993, to accommodate the different approaches of his two stars, Hopkins and Deborah Winger, who shared many scenes. Whereas Hopkins, 
preferring the spontaneity of a fresh take, liked to keep rehearsals to a minimum, Winger rehearsed continuously, to allow for this, Attenborough stood in for Hopkins during Winger's rehearsals, only bringing him in for the last one before a take, the director praised Hopkins for this extraordinary ability to make you believe when you hear him that it is the very first time he has ever said that line, it's an incredible gift, renowned for his ability to remember lines, Hopkins keeps his memory supple by learning things by heart such as poetry, and Shakespeare, in Steven Spielberg's Amistad, Hopkins astounded the crew with his memorization of a seven-page courtroom speech, delivering it in one go, and overawed Spielberg couldn't bring himself to call him Tony, and insisted on addressing him as Sir Anthony throughout the shoot. Hopkins is a gifted mimic, adept at turning his native Welsh accent into whatever is required by a character. He duplicated the voice of his late mentor, Laurence Olivier, for additional scenes in Spartacus in its 1991 restoration. His interview on the 1998 relaunch edition of the British TV talk show Parkinson featured an impersonation of comedian Tommy Cooper. Hopkins has said acting like a submarine has helped him to deliver credible performances in his thriller movies. He said, it's very difficult for an actor to avoid, you want to show a bit, but I think the less one shows the better. Personal life. Hopkins was made a commander of the British Empire, CBE, in 1987, and was knighted at Buckingham Palace in 1993 for services to the arts. In 1988, Hopkins was made an honorary D-Lit and in 1992 was awarded honorary fellowship from the University of Wales, Lampeter. He was made a freeman of his hometown Port Talbot in 1996. Hopkins resides in Malibu, California. He had moved to the U.S. once before during the late 1970s to pursue his film career, but returned to London in the late 1980s. However, he decided to return to the U.S. following his 1990s success. Retaining his British citizenship, he became a naturalized U.S. citizen on 12 April 2000, with Hopkins stating, I have dual citizenship, it just so happens I live in America. Hopkins has been married three times. His first two wives were Petronella Barker from 1966 to 1972, and Jennifer Linton from 1973 to 2002. He has a daughter from his first marriage, actress and singer Abigail Hopkins, born the 20th of August 1968. He married Stella Ariava in 2003. On Christmas Eve 2012, he celebrated his 10th wedding anniversary by having a blessing at a private service at St. David's Cathedral in Pembrokeshire. Hopkins has offered his support to various charities and appeals, notably becoming president of the National Trust's Snowdonia Appeal, raising funds for the preservation of Snowdonia National Park in North Wales. In 1998 he donated £1 million towards the £3 million needed to aid the Trust's efforts in purchasing parts of Snowdon. Prior to the campaign, Hopkins authored Anthony Hopkins' Snowdonia, which was published in 1995. Due to his contributions to Snowdonia, in addition to his film career, in 2004 Hopkins was named among the 100 Welsh heroes in a Welsh poll. Hopkins has been a patron of the YMCA Centre in his hometown of Port Talbot, South Wales for more than 20 years, having first joined the YMCA in the 1950s. He supports other various philanthropic groups. He was a guest of honour at a gala fundraiser for women in recovery. Inc., a Venice, California-based non-profit organization offering rehabilitation assistance to women in recovery from substance abuse. He is also a volunteer teacher at the Ruskin School of Acting in Santa Monica, California. Hopkins served as the honorary patron of the New Heritage Theater Company in Boise, Idaho from 1997 to 2007 participating in fundraising and marketing efforts for the Repertory Theater. Hopkins is a recovering alcoholic. He stopped drinking on the 25th of December 1975. He said that a major help in his recovery was his belief in God. He has criticized atheism, saying being an atheist must be like living in a closed cell with no windows. He quit smoking using the Alan Carr method. In 2008, he embarked on a weight loss program, and by 2010, he had lost 80 pounds. Hopkins contributed toward the refurbishment of a 2.3 million pounds wing at his alma mater, the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama in Cardiff, named the Anthony Hopkins Centre. It opened in 1999. Hopkins is a prominent member of environmental protection group Greenpeace and as of early 2008 featured in a television advertisement campaign, voicing concerns about Japan's continuing annual whale hunt. He has also been a patron of RAPT, Rehabilitation for Addicted Prisoners Trust, since its early days and helped open their first intensive drug and alcohol rehabilitation unit at Downview, HM Prison in 1992. Hopkins is an admirer of the Welsh comedian Tommy Cooper. On 23 February 2008, as patron of the Tommy Cooper Society, he unveiled a commemorative statue
statue in the entertainer's hometown of Carfilly. For the ceremony, he donned Cooper's trademark fez and performed a comic routine. Other work. In a 2012 interview, Hopkins stated, I've been composing music all my life and if I'd been clever enough at school I would like to have gone to music college. As it was I had to settle for being an actor. In 1986, he released a single called Distant Star, which peaked at No. 75 in the UK singles chart. In 2007, he announced he would retire temporarily from the screen to tour around the world. Hopkins has also written music for the concert hall, in collaboration with Stephen Barton as orchestrator. These compositions include The Mask of Time, given its world premiere with the Dallas Symphony Orchestra in October 2008, and Schizoid Salsa. In 1990, Hopkins directed a film about his Welsh compatriot, poet Dylan Thomas, titled Dylan Thomas, Return Journey, which was his directing debut for the screen. In the same year, as part of the restoration process for the Stanley Kubrick film Spartacus, Hopkins was approached to re-record lines from a scene that was being added back to the film. This scene featured Laurence Olivier and Tony Curtis, with Hopkins recommended by Olivier's widow, Joan Plowright to perform her late husband's part thanks to his talent for mimicry. In 1996, he directed August, an adaptation of Chekhov's uncle Vanya set in Wales. His first screenplay, an experimental drama called Slipstream, which he also directed and scored, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2007. In 1997, Hopkins narrated the BBC natural documentary series, Killing for a Living, which showed predatory behavior in nature. He narrated episode 1 through 3 before being replaced by John Shrapnel. Hopkins is a fan of the BBC sitcom Only Fools and Horses, and once remarked in an interview how he would love to appear in the series. Writer John Sullivan saw the interview, and with Hopkins in mind created the character Danny Driscoll, a local villain. However, filming of the new series coincided with the filming of The Silence of the Lambs, making Hopkins unavailable. The role instead went to Roy Marsden. On 31 October 2011, Andre Rieu released an album including a waltz which Hopkins had composed many years before, at the age of 19. Hopkins had never heard his composition, and the waltz goes on, before it was premiered by Rue's Orchestra in Vienna. Rue's album was given the same name as Hopkins P.S. In January 2012, Hopkins released an album of classical music, entitled Composer, performed by the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, and released on CD via the UK radio station Classic FM. The album consists of nine of his original works and film scores, with one of the pieces titled Marjum in tribute to his hometown near Port Talbot in Wales. In October 2015, Hopkins appeared as Sir in a BBC Two production of Ronald Harwood's The Dresser, alongside Ian McKellen, Edward Fox and Emily Watson. The Dresser is set in a London theatre during The Blitz, where an aging actor manager, Sir, prepares for his starring role in King Lear with the help of his devoted dresser, Norman, filmography, awards and nominations.